Amida, has given his name as the channel through which light and life can flow from the boundless merit that he earned during innumerable kalpas. But though the devotee may begin by believing that he calls on Amida, in truth it is Amida who calls to himself through the devotee. The caller has no self or an atma with which to call the name, for during the moment of calling Amida alone is present in his name. When the infinite speaks, the finite listener is silenced, and indeed, to anyone who has heard those six syllables even once in his lifetime, only the divine voice is worth listening to. All the rest is idle chatter. The great Sufi poet Rumi subbed up the paradox in one line, quote, Your invocation of me is my reply to you, close quote. Shinshu is thus seen to be a doctrine of the purest non-duality. Bhakti, in the true sense of an actual, quote, participation in the divine, not a dialogue with it, as in the quasi-dualistic I and thou devotions of the monotheistic religions, at least in their exoteric forms, for in reality there is no I, only thou. Unlike Christianity, where many are called but few are chosen, all are called and all ultimately chosen to reach Buddhahood. For thirty nights in the depths of winter, devotees of Amida, carrying little bells and hand lanterns, used to run through the streets of old Kyoto, reciting the Nembutsu and begging for donations to their temple, a custom which is the subject of a haiku by Ryota, quote, Winter Nembutsu White-robed voices go running with bells and lanterns through the snow. Close quote. It is significant that the white-robed pilgrims are invisible amid the landscape transformed by the purity of snow. All that can be seen are the dim candle flames in paper lanterns glowing like faith in the winter darkness. All that can be heard is the chanting of the Nembutsu, accompanied by little silver bells. Because he is the real caller, Amida responds immediately to the calling of his name. This is the oneness of the one who saves with the one to be saved. The hearing of this call, therefore, happens in the shortest space of time, in Ichinen, or one thought instant, so that Shin, like Zen, is a method of sudden attainment, reached by what Shinran designated, quote, a crosswise leap, Close quote. In contrast to the gradual transcendence of self-motivated meditation and invocation found in the Kamuryo Ju Kyo and the Amida Kyo, as well as in the methods of Tendai and Shingang, the inward name of Amida Butsu, silently heard in the heart, at once issues spontaneously from the lips as the spoken Nembutsu, Namu Amida Butsu. This may be variously pronounced and vocally abbreviated, but the two syllables of namu, since this word signifies the wholehearted abandonment of the ego, is considered as forming an essential part, an indispensable element of the name. Some followers of Jodo Shu held that in order to ensure rebirth it was necessary for the Nembutsu to be recited continually throughout one's lifetime and especially during one's last moments. But Shinran pointedly asked, If one were cut short by sudden death, or died unexpectedly in one sleep, thus being prevented from reciting the name, had all the Nembutsus previously recited gone for nothing? And was one therefore reborn in some inferior state? Besides, if we spend our time counting the number of repetitions of the name, then we are really putting our faith not in the name at all, but in the number of repetitions. In consequence, our mind of faith would be divided and distracted. On the contrary, if the repetition of the Nembutsu becomes automatic and continues even in our sleep, then we have merely established a samkara skanda, or mental habit, which will stand as an obstacle between us and the reception of pure faith. For if our minds are occupied with such repetitions, how can we hear Amida's call? All these are examples of the Nambutsu of self-effort, 
which is gently satirized in Taigi's haiku called Life Assurance, quote, After poisonous globe fist soup, he keeps mumbling the nembutsu, even while he sleeps, close quote. In the old days, before it was discovered how to remove the poison sack, the delicious soup made from fugu or globe fish sometimes proved fatal. Shinran also resolved the old controversy among the disciples of Honan as to whether Ichinin, or one calling of the Nembutsu, or Tanin, many callings, were necessary to ensure rebirth, by declaring that Amida never need call his devotee more than once, although the devotee should afterward recall Amida as many times as he felt in need to express his gratitude. So, too, what matters is not whether the name is called aloud or in silence, but the sincerity and continuity of devotion and the purity of faith, free from all self-effort. <laughs>